The Centers for Disease Control is warning people to stop using e-cigarettes. The reason? The number of possible cases of vaping-related lung illnesses has more than doubled in a month. Officials are saying the recent death of an Illinois resident could be the first in the U.S. related to vaping. The CDC is looking into 94 suspected cases across 14 states. It's looking at more than 450 cases of vaping-related illness. Six deaths are now connected to a growing public health crisis tied to vaping. 13 states have reported vaping-related deaths over the last two months. New Jersey's health department reporting its first death. State officials revealed in a document that Chinese e-cigarettes vary in quality and may pose safety risks such as liquid leakages, substandard batteries, and the addition of unsafe ingredients. A $12 billion global market that is largely unregulated. So it looks like business is booming. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the business is so good and the market is growing so fast. Most users are not going to know what is in the e-cigarettes or vaping products that they buy. There has been formaldehyde and diethyl. Diethyl, is, if you may remember, is popular from quote-unquote popcorn lung. That's just to name two chemicals. Anytime you get younger people without known medical issues, um, having severe respiratory problem, um, people start to question whether there's something in the environment or something that can link the cases together. September 19th, I started feeling what I thought was flu-like symptoms, uh, cold sweats, shaking, vomiting, and so I took myself to a local hospital. It turned out to be a new form of pneumonia, not just regular pneumonia, it was a result of the vape. I just freaked out and they said, your lung has collapsed, you have to go to surgery right now. His Instagram videos show the tube doctors put in his chest. Two days later, a surgeon operated to repair the hole in his lung. The surgeon told CBS News Amarada's lungs were inflamed, which could have come from something he'd been inhaling. But now, you've never been a smoker, a traditional smoker. Never, yeah. What have you been using? A uh, jewel. Jewel. The literature is just seeing the tip of the iceberg on how toxic and deadly this is to our youth. I think we need to be prepared for the concept that this may actually have long-term effects down the road many years after people have been vaping. So vaping started several years ago and it really came onto the market as a smoking cessation device and people were using it because they were saying this is going to help you to quit smoking cigarettes and it was touted and marketed as a safe alternative. The reality is, is that it's not safe. And we're now seeing the evidence of that, that vaping is not completely safe. Um, the vaping companies became very smart in their marketing and they changed the product and they made the product very attractive to young people. Um, illicit drugs, alcohol, they're a little more wary with, um, but vaping seems to be more universally accepted. Uh, they think that the water product in that is, is safer than anything else. They don't really understand the consequences of some of the addictive properties and toxic properties of vaping. They are not going to list on the packaging that there's formaldehyde or that there's lead or there's arsenic. Those are not chemicals that are going to be listing on their ingredient list. They are not mandated to put this on the packaging. Doctors used to actually prescribe cigarettes to kind of deal with stress um, and smoking was something that you would actually go to a doctor and they prescribe. Clearly evidence showed along the lines that uh, over time that that actually was not a good drug and way to deal with stress due to the carcinogenic nature of it. The rates of cigarette smoking drastically was reduced because kids got the message that smoking was bad for you and it would cause some serious health problems. But now these kids are vaping and they don't really realize that this is a product that is also unsafe. They're seeing the effects on themselves or they're more likely their friends and it's becoming more of a concern um, between the addictive property, between the use of THC um, and a lot of the lung diseases that are coming up now. So I do think that it's starting to sink in. I, I hope it's enough for students to be concerned and start taking care of their own health. Probably one of the more common additives that is being put into these vaping devices is marijuana. And the chemical component in marijuana is THC. What we are seeing is that kids are vaping THC at extremely high levels of concentration. When kids or young anybody would smoke marijuana, the marijuana was at a THC level of maybe somewhere around 15%. The THC level found in vaping devices is somewhere around 80 to 90%. Young people have never been exposed to that level of THC before. We don't know what the long-term consequences are going to be as a result of using 
these products. It's extremely dangerous and young people need to be aware of what could happen as a result. We really are concerned about the environment in which our students are, are coming to school. Uh, and we want our kids to come to Chatham High School every day feeling comfortable going into the bathrooms, walking the halls, and being with their classmates. Some of the things that we're looking to do with uh, vaping is, the first and foremost, is, is health education. Uh, there's more information coming out now uh, than there ever has been, and it's important for us to really curate that information and, and deliver that instruction in the classroom at all grade levels. The second thing we want to do is utilize our student assistance counselors as resources for students who are vaping, possibly are addicted, and don't want to, uh, to, to vape any longer. And the third thing we've had to do uh, is, is more punitive. We have uh, upgraded our policy to include a suspension for any students who uh, are in possession of a vape or a jewel or any paraphernalia that goes with it. Um, we want to be re rehabilitative, but in the same respect, we recognize that some of the things that we've attempted to do over the last couple of years really hasn't been as effective as we need it to be. Uh, so we've had to take the course of, of uh, updating board policy. Here at Chatham High School, we are starting a smoking cessation program or a vaping cessation program. So for any student that wants to quit and is needing help in quitting, they can access the student assistance counselors and get free confidential support around quitting. We are gonna be setting up groups um, in the coming weeks. So you just need to either contact myself or Mrs. Mahoney if you're interested.